Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on ethnicity and crime, focusing on institutional racism. One of the arguments for the overrepresentation of ethnic minority groups in crime statistics is institutional racism. And this is a topic we've already covered in education. But as a recap, institutional racism is where an institution operates based on policies and procedures that are designed to place one or more ethnic groups at a disadvantage in society. And in education, this is evidenced through uniform regulations, the curriculum, not having information available in different languages, etc. But this extends from education and through other institutions, not just the police, to put ethnic minority groups at a disadvantage in society. In crime, we look at institutional racism based on the actions of the criminal justice system. And in this video, we're going to look at some of the evidence that suggests institutional racism exists. One form of evidence used to demonstrate institutional racism is crime statistics. In the most recent crime survey of England and Wales, it showed that black citizens are nine times more likely to be stopped and searched by the police, and that despite a long-term decrease in the number of stop and searches, this has increased in the last year, particularly in London, where almost 50% of stop and searches are conducted. Furthermore, there are higher numbers of arrests for black and mixed ethnicity citizens than for other groups. Of course, with higher rates of stop and search, there is an increasing likelihood that there will be more arrests if people are carrying illegal goods. However, there have also been high profile stop and search cases of prominent members of the black community in the last year, including athletes and members of parliament, which leads us to question what the criteria for stop and search are. While these statistics are based on subjective interpretations of whether the individual is criminal, the percent of the prison population that is from non-white backgrounds also suggests that there is institutional racism in the criminal justice system. 27% of prisoners are from a black, Asian or minority ethnic background, when they only represent 16% of the population. Another aspect of institutional racism relates to the attitudes of those enforcing the law. Waddington suggested that the police have an off-duty subculture of stereotyping certain groups, including working class and ethnic minorities. This canteen culture often informs their decision making when they're on duty. Shortcuts are taken in order to get the job done, and assumptions of guilt are often based upon the social characteristics rather than evidence. This can be developed further when looking at the discretion that police show in investigating incidents and cautioning individuals. And there's a clear link here to Cicero's negotiation of justice, with those that appear not to fit a criminal type being cleared of wrongdoing. Waddington and earlier Fielding would both suggest that these off-duty stereotypes inform this decision-making and cause an overrepresentation of particularly black and mixed ethnicity crime. Institutional racism has been recognised in the British criminal justice system, with the first noted case of this being during the trial of the Mangrove Nine in 1970. Whilst the judge in the case acknowledged that there was racial hatred on both sides of the case, it was noted that the attempts by the Metropolitan Police to victimise those involved in the protests over police harassment was institutionally racist. The most famous case of institutional racism being acknowledged was the McPherson report into the investigation of the murder of Stephen Lawrence. McPherson found that the Metropolitan Police had failed in their duty by assuming that Lawrence was murdered because of gang connections, because he was black, rather than actively seeking to prosecute his white killers. The McPherson report outlined 70 recommendations to tackle institutional racism in the Metropolitan Police, many of which many of which were not met. A more contemporary reference to institutional racism was found in the Lamy Review in 2017, conducted by Labour MP David Lamy. He highlighted the overrepresentation of ethnic minority citizens in crime statistics, with 25% of adult prisoners in the UK and 41% of young offenders being from ethnic minority backgrounds. At this point, only 14% of the UK were from an ethnic minority background, which demonstrates the overrepresentation. The Lamy Review was also released at the height of the Windrush scandal, another example of institutional racism. This was the forced deportation of citizens who had originally been invited to the UK from the Caribbean to help rebuild Britain in the aftermath of World War II, but were never classified as official citizens. One of the reasons for the impact of institutional racism 
being felt so widely is that it is a continuation of a theme present in other institutions such as work, healthcare and most notably in schools. In schools, black and mixed ethnicity students are more likely than other groups to be temporarily and permanently excluded from education, albeit not far behind the working class white students. Research presented by, amongst others, the School Exclusion Project has demonstrated the impacts of exclusion on pupils, with reports that 85% of prisoners at one time had been excluded from the education system. In evaluating claims of institutional racism, it's worth looking at some further claims. Firstly, following the McPherson report in 1999, the Metropolitan Police's BAME Officers Association suggested that the police force was institutionally racist and cited evidence from its members. Recent recommendations have suggested that in order to tackle this, 40% of the Met Police should belong to minority ethnic groups, a figure that is roughly in line with the greater diversity of ethnic backgrounds in London. However, critics of institutional racism will argue that the police act upon information provided to them from the public, and so they are merely responding to information that has been passed on. However, this doesn't account for the police's use of individual discretion for stop and search statistics. And finally, the role of the media can be seen to impact on the decision making of the police by creating stereotypical folk devils from ethnic minority communities such as the black mugger or the Asian terrorist. This leads to the police profiling those that fit these overgeneralized stereotypes, which demonstrates the interaction between racism in wider society and institutional racism in the criminal justice system. That concludes this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on ethnicity and crime, focusing on institutional racism. Thanks for watching.